Hello friends and fellow missionaries, this is Trevor Owen with another Mission Minute. I've been pondering a lot on wisdom and grace in our world, and how that defines us based on our past actions and the actions that have been done to us. You know, I don't know if you've been following this Brett Kavanaugh Supreme Court nomination, and I'm going to do my best to stay out of politics because I think it's mostly worthless. But basically, it has boiled down to, at least in the media and in the discussions, they're talking about whether or not at 17 he sexually assaulted this 15-year-old. That may be a handful of others. Now, that's horrible. And it's awful. I don't mean to discount that at all. But is that really how we should define him? You know, when I was younger, we moved schools. I moved schools every two or three years. And then we moved when I was 10 to a new place. And I was homeschooled for a year and a half. And then we moved again, and I went to a private school for a year, and then into a public school, finally for the first time at 8th grade. And I was hopelessly naive. And through that whole time, I, I didn't really have a whole camaraderie of friends by any means, one or two here and there. And even when I was homeschooled, my most vivid memory of my sixth grade friend was we got in a fight out in the forest one time over some game we were playing and he went back to the house and got his dad's gun and came out stalking around through the forest trying to kill me. No lie. And I remember hiding in a slash pile of stumps, crying, hoping he would go away so I could run and get on my bike and pedal the four miles or three miles or whatever it was home to get away from him. And then fast forward to eighth grade and I was pretty bullied and picked on and naive and got fights a lot. really didn't have any friends. Spent a lot of time in the forest by myself and then after that, kind of got in with a few not-so-great friends, and at some point started looking up uh, explosives online. I downloaded the Anarchist Cookbook and started making bombs and mustard gas and experimenting with this kind of stuff. And then one night when I was about 15 or so, this led to me sneaking out of the house at 10 o'clock at night, and I had the brilliant idea that I would take, make a Molotov cocktail and put it in the center of the road, right around a corner, and as a car came around, I would shoot the jar with my BB gun or pellet gun, and it would shatter the glass and create a giant fireball that would scare the driver. Now, fortunately, a car didn't come along, and getting bored, I decided to go ahead and just shoot the jar, and then found out the pellet gun wouldn't rupture the glass, and so I dejectedly packed up my stuff and took it back to the house. Now, you play that scenario out almost any other way, that would have been pretty bad. That would have really defined me. Instead, I continued to go on to sneak out of the house and drag race and get in car accidents and steal stuff from road signs and destroy things and just generally kind of get in trouble, but not really. Now fast forward 40 years, and I'm, I think, a generally well-regarded individual been a pastor for 10 years. I'm very respected. I travel the world doing humanitarian stuff and attempting to help heal the brokenness in our world. I sit and I listen to people in their pain and can genuinely empathize and care.
Now, I don't mean to compare myself to Brett Kavanaugh in any way, shape, or form. Other than to say, life sucks sometimes. I suck sometimes. But here's the thing about wisdom. You only get wisdom through seeing pain and finding grace. And the problem is, the problem is that that pain and that grace are beyond your control. I mean, I think about my life and the ways I was bullied and isolated and the stuff I got into and the ways that that played out and the destructive tendencies that maybe by grace never ended me in juvie. And, and there was a lot of darkness there, both in me and in others. And God in some way has shown me that, that I'm forgiven. And that out of that forgiveness, I have the responsibility to forgive others. That I have the responsibility to, to fight for what is right. To seek to, to bring hope and healing to the world. Not just from my past experience, but even the darkness that still lurks in me. You see, I'm not so interested in whether or not Brett Kavanaugh sexually assaulted that girl. I hope he did. But I'm really much more interested in what he did with that. Did he stare into the darkness of those teenage years and whatever he was wrestling with and decide, you know what, I'm going to go into law and I'm going to try and fix our world. I'm going to try and prevent crimes and destruction. I'm going to try and bring justice and, and seek out what is right. Or did he go, on oh, and get away with bad stuff and I'm going to just get better at hiding it. And in the same way, did, did that lady who is now a doctorate of psychology and has dedicated her life to studying um, traumas and strange psychologies and difficulties, did, did she take being a victim and turn it into fuel to, to move forward in the world and bring hope and healing to people, to understand brokenness and evil and, and seek to make life better? or? Well, what if she had just become a victim and defined herself by being worthless? You see, I, I'm far more interested in what is done with the difficult things in life than, than what difficult things were done. And I think Jesus is too. You know, Jesus never shied away from telling people that their sins were horrible, right? I mean, he even tells Simon when, when the woman comes and washes Jesus' feet, he says, you know, this woman and her sins, though they are many, have been forgiven. See, Jesus calls out her sin publicly, but then says... But grace has forgiven that. And because of that, she loves much. You see, I think that's God's economy. God calls us to out of the darkness that has been done to us, and even the darkness that is within us, find a way to move towards forgiveness. And then love much. Now certainly, the opposite can happen. People can entrench and get angry and get worse and get darker. But the offer of Christ is to stare into that darkness, find grace, and move past the pain to bring love. That's what I want to know about Brad. That's what I want people to know about me. 
That's how I think God sees me. I hope you can do that in our world, too. And in that sense, stay on mission. See you around.